and make it work. Not this case. Um, I did go ahead and strip it and make a mess, and the pictures will attest that it's, the wall is in, a, in a horrible condition. I allowed it to dry. I used 80 grit sandpaper. I sanded off the large flaps. Um, I, I, uh, in fact, it was hung with wheat paste, and the process of soaking it and soaking it and soaking it, that removed enough adhesive. Um, I used the, the draw tight on it. I allowed it to dry an hour. I did not skim coat the surface. I was in a hurry. I used um, Fix-All to, to uh, patch the deepest spots that would shrink. Then I used uh, a hard setting spackle and feathered the worst spots because I knew that with the paper I was using I had to use a blank stock so I could get a little bit of smoothing action out of the blank stock. Um, the, I applied the, the, the draw tight and allowed it to dry for one hour and there were no bubbles. I patched it and there were no bubbles. I primed over my patching and there were no bubbles. I hung the blank stock and there were no bubbles. And then I hung a, a Brunswick and Fee um, hand printed paper, a C translucent paper over it, and there were no bubbles. But again, there were no bubbles in any part of the installation. And Every time I've worked on a surface like this, there's somewhere that I have to go and dig out the bubbles and start over the process and wait for the patch to dry and wait for the primer for that spot to dry and hope it doesn't bubble again. Okay, then we were confronted with one more kind of test that would be nice to do. And that is, how do I go get a sample of eight-year-old chalky bedroom flat paint and peel it off the wall and bring it here and we can sample on it? Fortunately, Frank Nicholson called up and said, could you please try it on this particular paint that I keep hearing reports about? And it's a Sherwin-Williams paint. It's called Promar 700. I, I said, gee, Frank, I didn't have any chalky paint. I called him back and I said, I told him I'm going to get some. Thank you for the suggestion. So I made up a couple more sample boards with this chalky paint. I primed that chalky paint this morning. I painted the chalky paint yesterday. The Promar, I need to explain that when I went to uh, Sherwin Williams and said, I need Promar 700, and they said, how much do you need? I said, well, a quart would be nice. He said, well, only, it only comes in fives. <laughs> and I go, ouch. What am I going to do with the rest of that junk? <laughs> <laughs> and so he says, can't you use 400? And I said, nope. I gotta have 700. He says, "Well, 700 isn't a very good product. That's that's if you call it apartment paint. I mean, that must be one step lower than contractor paint. I don't know." <laughs> anyway, I need to say something really positive. This guy says, "Well, I'll go in the back and see if there's a damaged five, and I'll pour off a gallon for you." And I thought, "Man, that is a real gentleman. I have never ever heard of a store that would volunteer to do something like that." And I watched him. He put a coffee cup in the spout of that five gallon, poured it through a coffee cup into a one gallon can and he gave me a gallon of Promar 700, including the cost of a fresh can. It was only $9.99, so it must be $3 paint. Uh, as I said, uh, that's sample number 13 and 14, and I painted that flat paint out yesterday and primed it this morning. Before I go to panel 13 and 14, I want to talk to Bill Williams if he's done any of his double cuts yet. Okay, I've done several double cuts, one on Mike's, which he hung earlier, and then the three of the ones that I've already done, and one I really put the razor blade into it, and I think we've all done that because this is a particularly heavy paper that uh, you have to do that to make sure you get everything because the first time I got some strings and uh, residue from it. And you can see the razor blade cuts, but none of the primer itself has lifted up at all, but I haven't... Bill, why don't you go over and peel them off? Let's take a look. Yeah. Okay, the first thing, pull them right off, throw them under the table. First thing I see here is that there is no, no re-wetting. There's no bubbling at all underneath here. Uh, nothing lifting up. Uh, okay, same thing. Nothing there, clear. Anything on the back of the paper? Outside of too much paste? Well, Bill, you failed the test. Okay, let's see what happens with yours. 
Okay, Kay. No, 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 no. Talk until I get the mics here. <laughs> this is a lightweight vinyl coated. I only have two cuts. The first one is about five minutes later, and there's hardly any impression. And there's no. Pull the whole thing right off. Throw it under the table. Tell me what you see on the back of the paper first. Nothing but paste on the back of the paper. Do you see any rewetting on the wall? No rewetting, just a slight mark in some spots. No bubbling. No bubbling. Okay, pull off the rest of it. Second cut is uh, 10 minutes, and you can see a line where I cut, pressed through, and cut. What kind of paste? <laughs> Uh, it's kind of mixed. <laughs> we broke every manufacturer's rule on, on wallpaper paste. The roll had one thing on it, and the paste bucket had something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, once again, we can't think of anything worse that we can do to a, a primer than what she just did here. And there is no rewetting. There's no bubbling. All you can see is the cut from where the blade went in too deep, which also we kind of did purposely. Okay, we got another sample over here that says that Evans Heavy Duty Clear was used and this panel was hung at 140, this panel at 141, this panel at 142, this panel at 143. They really took the technical part of this program to heart. <laughs> now you finally tested with a real adhesive. Okay, this will be the real test. So uh, whenever we get this um, craftsman back, we'll have her do her test. In the meantime, let's talk about that Sherwin-Williams chalky paint sample. Uh, this okay, this is panel number 13. This is Promar 700 flat apartment quality paint. This is my patented test. <laughs> I want you to see that that paint just comes right off of there like it's eight-year-old bedroom paint. And again, this is Promar 700, but on top of that, applied at 10 o'clock, was uh, the clear, non-pigmented draw tight on top of our chalky paint sample. So that means it's been four hours. Uh, this isn't unfair. I'm going to the duct tape. <laughs> Here we go. What do you think, Carol? <laughs> you want to do the brown tape too, Mike? Or just the tape? Yeah, we'll do the other tape. Okay, here we go. Are we ready? Hey, wait, hold on, Mike. Here, Mike. Brown tape. Brown tape. Back over itself. Bravo! Or at least it looks good from here. Ready. That is clean. Yay! That is clean. Okay. Um, there's a lot of oil-based paint you can't do that with. This is four hours on top of a paint that truly isn't cured. A vinyl paint doesn't cure in 24 hours. Even if it's cured, that's probably the worst paint. <laughs> the worst paint you could do, yeah. The only, the, uh, before Frank called, I had considered using a product called Low Sound, which is what you spray on acoustic ceilings that is just, as Ch Charles says, dirt that sticks. And I thought, well, that really is beyond the call because uh, in a case like that, if I had to hang over something that weak, I would blind stock it and get them to sign a disclaimer or get somebody else to strip it. Mike, can we stop here just for one second? Yeah. Okay, what I'd like to do is get Frank on Mike here. He's Frank Nicholson, Evans Adhesive. 
and he's had problems with this particular uh, product that we're now testing. So just so that we get it on, Mike Frank, what you're talking about. Yeah, the problems that I've, I've experienced with this particular paint is that it's so porous and, and uh, so loaded with, with fillers that any time you install wall covering over it and you have any degree of expansion or contraction, it literally, literally peels the paint right off the wall. I mean, it, it just comes right off sometimes down to the bare mud that's underneath it. So it's a, a paint that has very little adhesion to a wall and is extremely sensitive to, to moisture. Okay, so the first test is then on the brown tape, it's held up. Uh, here we go. We're going to go ahead and jump ahead to the gray tape. And I'm not just pulling this off easy either. Aha! We got it. We got it. <laughs> All right. Actually, you don't have to dry tape. You delaminated the chalk. From oh, that's right. We pulled the, we pulled the paint off, and that's what Frank's talking about is the bond of the paint. But actually, more than that, I've delamin delaminated the cardboard. So I would say the primer made that paint pretty tough. I would expect to just see white paint on here, the back side of the paint, and, I, and, and it's brown. I'm seeing cardboard on there. So that's as tough as the drywall. And I was as mean as I could be. Let's try it again, only a little bit more reasonable. That's it. Hold more. All of the paint manufacturers say the way you test their paint is with this kind of tape. Nobody talks about using gray tape. Good job. Great product. Great product. Yeah, great product. This was installed at 140 at 145. The double cut was performed and there was no damage. This one down here, this one was installed at 141. And this double cut right here was done at 150 and no damage. This one was installed at 143. And this was uh, double cut at 2 o'clock. All right, so th uh, that's 15 minutes and those are, that's an un unpasted not a pre-pasted, it's an ordinary wallpaper with dark seams. And uh, yeah, let's pull it off, let's see Chris, what it does. Up here and pull it off. She doesn't want to pull it off. Do it. I'm not feeding you guys. It's already stuck, no lifting. I want to explain that Glenn just pulled that piece off my, my uh, checkerboard razor blade cut sample area. Right up in here is where I previously scored it with a razor blade. And all, it, all he's getting is delamination of the paper. Solid as a rock. That paper is about 90% stuck now, so I mean it's a maximum destruction if you wanted to pull something loose. And I see both a chemist and an owner over here, they're smiling a whole lot. <laughs> Mike, where are we at now? What I want to know is, Ron, is there any other kind of test that I could have or should have? No, I cannot think of any test that you could have done that wasn't done tonight, today. Okay, we have another question over here from Carolyn Green who doesn't have her yellow shirt on, but she is a member. Yeah, I wanted, um, after you double cut, after you, after you double cut, um, like three weeks to a month later, is that double cut seam going to pop? Anybody ever had that problem? When, when it dries and thaws? Just pick out the panel you'd like to take home with you, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I wanted to point out, too, um, which Mike was doing the raw drywall, and we have a lot of um, construction going on in Vegas right now. We're using this on one of the Prim Valley Hotel. And they're using hot mud. And there was a question about hot mud. Do you want to talk about that, Mike? Okay, the hot mud I've experienced with that some degree and where I'm trying to rush a job. 
And what that makes is even a slightly more fragile surface because there's less dry time, less moisture clinging and penetration of the drywall in the area where you're patching. And a little more brittle surface because it wants to shrink more. Um, but to be honest, in fact, we did a charity project at the, in the mayor's private office quarters in the city hall uh, for Mayor Reardon about two years ago over some paneling and we used hot mud on that situation and it still takes as much work and it still took as long for it to dry. Um, I personally don't think the hot mud works <laughs> for what they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get more, more coats in one day. Uh, but no, I did not use a hot mud on this. I used just the standard topping mix that I normally run into on a job. But you're right, a hot mud dries faster, it wants to shrink, shrink a little more and dry with a weaker bond than this. I don't think that answers your question, but that's as much as I can contribute. In, in, on the job that we're doing in Vegas, it worked beautifully. You know, today, we're talking about today, I don't know, a year ago or whatever, but it's working beautifully. And because it's so odorless, uh, getting into the casinos, you know, they have to come in at night, do it really quick, have those casinos moving in the morning, and it's working just wonderfully with that hot mud also. So that was a point I just wanted to say, you know, that hadn't been brought up. I, I'm just about finished anyway. The only issue left that, that Bill brought up was, I think, or is this removability or strippability of the paper. Um, this particular sample right here was installed about three days ago and, and that's really not a fair removal test. Paper, the cloth back vinyl takes sometimes six or seven days to really be dry and it's sometimes even longer than that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull on some of that and see what I get. I've got clear and pigmented on, on that sample board. It was installed I think about three or four days ago maybe five days ago. Okay, uh, what we're going to do now is, the, is just strippability of cloth back vinyl on a sample. This sample board was installed about four days ago. It was installed over both the top half of the board has the, the non-pigmented draw tight and the bottom half of the board